First one, the derivative of any constant. C is constant. The derivative of any constant is what? In case you forgot, let me refresh your memory. There's a constant. Let me give you one. X equals five, I mean Y equals five, I'm sorry. What's the derivative of that? The derivative is the slope of that line. What is the slope of that line? Zero. Any constant, y equals seven, y equals zero, y equals minus three. The slope of all these lines is always a zero. The slope is the rise over the run. There is no rise. So the derivative, since the derivative is the slope of these lines, the derivative of any constant is always a zero. That's rule number one. So what is the derivative of seven? Zero. Remember I told you, if you want to go home early, answer the questions. The derivative of five, zero. The derivative of zero, zero. The derivative, I'm gonna write this different here. The derivative of pi, Zero, pi is a constant, right? 3.14. The derivative of E. E is a constant, 2.71828, right? Zero. The derivative of sine 30 degrees. Zero, because sine 30 degrees is a number. And the derivative of that is zero. So the derivative of any constant is always a zero. Now, the other rule that you spotted there quickly, when I put that example up there, it says the derivative of x to the n is what? Is equal to n times x to the n minus 1. That's the biggie. What does that mean? The derivative of x to the fifth is what? 5, bring the power to the front, Reduce the power by 1. What's 5 minus 1? 4. The derivative of x squared. Bring the power to the front. That'll be what? 2. And reduce the power by 1, which is what? 1. I don't have to write the 1. The derivative of x to the negative 3 is what? Negative 3x three, yeah. to what power? Negative 4. Very good. Subtract 1 from the power. Always subtract 1 from the power. The derivative of x to the negative 10 Try again. Negative what? Negative 10. Negative 10x to what power? Negative 11. Negative 11. Good. Now, let me take you back to about two minutes ago, five minutes ago, can't remember when. And we did this problem. I asked you the derivative of this question. Remember that one? The square root of x. Remember these steps? Remember what the answer is, 1 over, can you see the answer? 1 over 
2 times the square root of x. Remember that answer. What's the derivative of the square root of x? Now, the square root of x, you can write that as what? x to what power? 1 half. And the rule says what? Take the power in the front and reduce the power by 1. What's 1 half minus 1? Negative what? 1 half? Negative power, what does that mean? 1 over 2. What's x to the minus 1 half? Isn't that 1 over x to the 1 half? Which is, I'm going step by step intentionally to make it a longer problem. 1 over the square root of x. That's what x to the 1 half. And when you multiply the fractions, 1 times 1, 1, 2 times the square root of x. And I really try to stretch it step by step by step. And look how quick. If I gave you 1 over x, our book did that. 1 over x. Where is it? I think they did that in the book. Uh, and that would have been about a page long. I don't see it there. I guess they didn't do it. If I said to you, what is the derivative of 1 over x? Don't try to make your own rules. Go, oh, the derivative of 1 over the derivative of x. No, 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 no. The only thing we know is this one and the derivative of a constant is 0. That's all we know. So we got to use that one. You can write that as what? x to what power? Negative x to the minus 1. And now apply that rule. Take the power to the front and reduce the power by 1. Final answer is what? Negative 1 over x squared. I guarantee you if I did this the long way, will be an entire page. At least an entire page. So the shortcuts are nice, actually. OK. Let me ask one more question. What's the derivative of x? Because you might see that a lot. One. Why is it one? We'll use that rule there. What's the power of x now? Isn't it one? So move the power to the front and reduce the power by one. And anything to the zero power is what? One. That's one times one, which is one. So the derivative of x is always a one. Let me add that to the list here, just to make it. The derivative of a constant is 0. These are the three rules so far that I know. Right there. 1, 2, 3. I'm almost done. What about if you have a number in the front? Instead of just x to the fifth, let's say we have what's the derivative? Our book might do this like cx to the n, some constant times x to the n. If you have a number in the front, here's the good news. If you want, you can move that number to the front because that's the derivative is really the limit remember when you have a limit if there's a number on the inside you can take it outside I can take that C outside and multiply it by the derivative of X to the N so if I said to you what's the derivative of 5x to the third <coughs> 
I can take the 5 and put it in the front there. I can take the 5 and move it right there. And write that 5 times the derivative of x to the third. 5 times. What's the derivative of x to the third? 3x squared. So what's 5 times 3? 15 x squared. The truth is nobody does it this way. Nobody. They just go 5 times 3, 15, reduce the power by 1. But th that's because you can pull it there. But I'm not going to write all these steps 10 times, so when I see this one now, 4x to the 7th, my answer is what? 4 times 7, which is what? 28, and lower the power by 1. x to what power? 6. If I have the derivative of negative 6x to the negative 5, What's negative 6 times a negative 5? 30. Positive 30. x to what power? Negative 6. Negative 6. Very good. The derivative of pi x to the 7. That will be what? 7 pi x to the 6. And one more, couple more rules than we've done. And again, I'm only giving you one term. What happens if you got more than one term? I'll just go directly to it. This one says if you have the derivative of f of x plus or minus g sub x. Doesn't matter if you have plus or minus. You can take the derivative of the first one. I'll just do it the derivative. It's the derivative of the first. And it's plus, you leave it a plus. If it's minus, you leave it a minus. The derivative of the second. What does that mean? If I said to you, can you tell me what the derivative of 6x squared plus 5x minus 3? Find the derivative of each one. What's the derivative of 6x squared? 12x. Notice that's a plus, stays plus. What's the derivative of 5x? 5 minus, what's the derivative 3? Zero. 0. So what's my answer? 12x plus 5. Let me look at some of the problems we've done tonight and see if we can do them quickly here. We did the derivative of x squared plus 1. Remember that one? See this question? There's the four-step process. What was the answer? 2x. Let's eliminate all these steps now. What's the derivative of x squared plus 1? What's the derivative of x squared? 2x plus what's the derivative of 1? What's the answer? 2x. Look at this. Compare it to this. Much better. Let's see another example we did. We did the square root of x already. I wrote that ugly one. 
this one. Remember that one I put there? So let's put it back there. f of x equals, I wrote 3x to the 24 plus 7x to the 15 minus 8x. And I said, what's the derivative? What's the derivative of this? 3 times 24, which is what? 72x to what power? Subtract 1 from it, 23. There's the plus sign. 7 times 15. 105x to what power? 14 minus, what's the derivative of 8x? When I said I wasn't joking, 22 seconds, I don't think it took 22 seconds. Now, there's a few of them don't fit that rule. So let me give you these. These you have to memorize. I'm telling you, you want to make life easy on yourself. For calculus two, who's taking calculus two? Most, yep. You want to memorize these rules, especially the trig one. Here are some of the trig ones. The derivative. We can derive it using the four-step process. That's actually where the four-step process comes in. If you want to derive this, our book does that. I'm sure you don't care at this point. The derivative of sine of x is what? Cosine of x. If you do the four-step process, you will prove that's the cosine of x. The derivative of cosine of x is equal to negative sine of x. The derivative of e to the x just happens to be e to the x. Again, I can derive any one of them using the four-step process. Just those three? Well, let me see in this section. There's plenty more, but in this section, that's it in this section. So if I give you a problem like this, y equals sine of x over 2 plus 5e to the x. I'm getting carried away with I'm making this up. Plus 4 cosine of x minus 7x squared plus 3. Can you tell me what the derivative of that? I know this is bugging you. Can I just take this one and write that 1 half instead of that number over 2? Can I make that 1 half? So now what's the derivative? There's the one half. What's the derivative of sine of x? Cosine of x. Here's the five. What's the derivative e to the x? e to the x. Here's the four. What's the derivative of cosine of x? Negative sine of x. Here's the minus. What's the derivative seven x squared? 14x. Here's the plus. What's the derivative 3? Zero. Zero. So the only thing I will do is probably clean it, make that cosine of x over, over 2 plus 5e to the x. Make that what? Minus 4 sine of x minus 14x. So these are the shortcuts. You want to know them. Next class, we have plenty more shortcuts to add. Tangent, secant, cosecant.